Welcome, everybody. I am so excited uh, for this podcast because I get to interview one of my friends and mentors and someone I've known for a number of years. Uh, Dan Sullivan is the co-founder and creator of the Strategic Coach Program uh, since its inception in 1989. Uh, this lifetime focusing program has helped over 18,000 accomplished entrepreneurs to reach new heights of success and happiness. Actually, he's the coach uh, to many of my friends, many of my most successful friends. He's a visionary, an innovator, gifted conceptual thinker. Dan Sullivan has over 40 years of experience. He's a highly regarded speaker, consultant, strategic planner and coach to entrepreneurial individuals and groups. So why would I have him on the brain warrior's way? Um, People completely forget about the brain at work. And uh, it was, what, seven or eight years ago, Dan, that you came to the clinic? uh, It'll be eight years in November. So um, I was 66 uh, and um, I came to uh, the Newport, went, uh, as it was then, the Newport office, uh, Newport Beach, and um, went through, you know, I did the questionnaire, which, uh, you know, I love the 200 question questionnaire online and then came in for the three days. And uh, I, so that I, it was a great discovery for me. Uh, I didn't go there to have a discovery for myself, but I came away with a discovery uh, for myself, which has been phenomenal since I. Um, you know, followed the Amen Clinic path. So why did you come? Well, I have a lot of clients and I'm very conscious that if I have, you know, at any given time, we're in the 2,500 to 3,000 range um, of entrepreneurs. And these are all successful entrepreneurs. Um, so we catch them when they've kind of achieved what they originally thought they were going to achieve. And now they're they want to jump to the next level. And I was conscious that one of the big issues that a lot of them had was the distractibility, which reading up on a little was, um, you know, we came across your books, we came across your videos. And I said, you know, I, I bet I, if I went to the Amen Clinic, I would get a much bigger insight about uh, some of the daily burdens and the, you know, the, that people carry inside their head that nobody really knows about. And sometimes it's so bad that people are aware outside themselves. So I came actually to go through the testing so I would be in a position to advise other people. And what did you find? I mean, I know what we found, but what was the epiphany for you? Well, it was really interesting because I, I kind of breezed through the test and the image that came across, according to my consultant at the end of the three days, she said, you know, there's a real, real wide gap between who you seem to be answering the questionnaire and what our tests have found over the last uh, three days. She said, you seem, your life is simple. It seems very, you know, kind of tranquil. It's kind of organized, lots of structure to it. You don't seem to have a lot of, you know, upsets, but the tests tell me that there's a circus going on inside. So um, what, <laughs> what, what, what gives, what gives, you know, how do you explain this radical difference? And uh, so just briefly for a coach, um, um, it's that, Uh, We get people to think about their thinking, and we've created a whole series of tools which are kind of question-driven. They're open-ended questions where they have to do a time shift where um, they're the way they are now, and they compare themselves to where they were in the past, and then they discover, you know, that some things have gotten better and some things have gotten worse, and that's their knowledge, and we've simply asked them to go inside their you know, their own thinking, their own experience. And then that we ask them to put together a plan of things they've discovered through their thinking. Now they're going to make a shift over the next 90 days. And our our main concept is called who, not how, uh, which is that you're tempted when you see something bigger and better to do the how to get there, but you're no good at that. And all of your frustrations is getting involved in activities that you're not any good at. And who you have to do is you constantly have to identify who's. And so just to make a whole point, I could talk to people about 
ADD and what I've discovered, or I can just send them to the Amen Clinic. So it's a who that does the how rather than me doing it. So just to bring it back to the to the Amen Clinic, and I think I can count 25 or 26 that I know personally and just others that I've talked about. And it was actually a client who actually recommended uh, the Amen Clinic that he, he had been there. So, um, so what happened, uh, the consultant, I'll just sum this up very quickly, she asked me what I do and she said, well, I don't know who else you designed all these thinking tools, but I know the main person that you designed them all. And she said, you're a self-therapy guy and you figured out a way over your first 66 years to kind of get yourself balanced and focused, but that isn't your life. Uh, your life is actually chaos and you figured out a means to kind of balance yourself and then you found out that it was valuable to other people. And um, so, I, you know, that was a great, uh, it was a great, I, I've never considered myself ADD. But your scan was very ADD. And so when we treated it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with lifestyle interventions, but also medicine, um, what was the difference? Yeah, well, the big thing was getting off sugar. I mean, because I didn't realize how unbalancing sugar was. So between the time I did the scan, I didn't see you when I came in. Then I saw you at Genius Network where you pulled up this, you, with, you know, you asked me if, um, you know, you could pull up the scan, you looked at it, and uh, I'm gonna say this for the record so that it's out there. And your response said, you know, I've heard you're really smart, but I don't know how you could be with such a shitty brain. That This is, um, I, got, I got the words exactly, and I didn't consider it an insult, you know, I mean, because I had seen, I had seen the scans and uh, I grew up on a farm, took a lot of knocks. I was a real roughhouser as a kid. I was in lots of fights. And uh, I played football, and uh, one game I got knocked out in the first quarter, and they put me back in the fourth quarter, and I got knocked out on the first play. But the next week I was back in, you know. So the protocols were a bit different in those days, and um, and you know you could see where the there was like a lights out. It was like a part of the city that had lost its power, and I suspect it was on the opposite side where I got hit. But you could just see there was a non-functioning part of my brain, and it was overall it was like um, you know smog. It, uh, there was no brightness to it. And then a year later, when we came back, and the other thing is that I had started taking uh, the consultant who I met with at the end of my clinic visit. She said, "Look," she said, "I um, I don't know if you want to do this or not, but." Um, you may find a pharmaceutical helpful and uh, the, here's the prescription. And um, so I didn't do it for three months because I didn't know whether I wanted to, did I need it? You know, I got, you know, I'm a self-therapy guy. And um, so before a workshop, it was Adderall, you know, it was very low uh, dosage, it was five megs. And, um, and I said, you know, I'm just gonna try it out. And I, I took it and it didn't act immediately so it was about five minutes before the workshop and I went in and literally, um, I, I, I don't know who, who's told you this, but it was like a bang and everything went quiet. And for the first time in my life, my whole life had been about noise, you know, that uh, uh, inside my brain it was night. And for seven and a half years, I've had quiet. First time in my life I've had quiet. And the other thing is things slowed down and I could stay on track. I could stay on schedule. And I've had the, quite extraordinarily, the most productive, creative seven and a half years of my life. And it shows. I mean, everybody around me, uh, and my team notices it. My, I, our clients stay a long time. I've got, I've got uh, 40 people who have been in the program for more than 20 years on a continual basis. So they notice. I mean, they, they notice changes and everything else. So I said, if that can happen, you know, with the knowledge that you gave me, and if it can happen with the lifestyle change that I did, and uh, a little bit of a pharmaceutical help, um, you know, this is really something that I want to make available to our strategic coach clients, because there's a lot of them, I would say 50% that are affected in some way. And I know 
all the different types of ADD. It's not one thing, it's a whole, um, you know, there's many dimensions to this. There's many, a lot of it's environmental, a lot of it is, um, you know, So it's super not. interesting though, that one, you didn't know, you're highly successful, you're coaching highly successful people, you developed great systems, and your brain is nowhere near optimized. It's nowhere near healthy, um, which is why I use the term I did. Um, and when we gave you a stimulant, so Adderall is a stimulant, it actually quieted things down for you so you could better use the great brain you have. And so when the brain is sleepy, a lot of people don't know, especially the front part of the brain, its job is to settle things down. It's the brain's break. We call it the executive part of the brain. And when it doesn't work hard enough, when it's low in blood flow, um, it's like there's chaos inside your, your mind and it's not a choice. It's not like you ever wake up and go, well, I want chaos in my head or I want noise in my life. It's, it's not a choice. And just balancing your brain can make a huge, positive, long-term difference, which is why I'm so excited to have you on our podcast. Well, can I ask you a question uh, about that? You bet. Um, yeah. So, you know, I sort of compensated with things that I was doing outside myself with the structures and the tools. Uh, is there um, also a sort of compensating that the brain does? You know, I'm not using this part, but I'm going to move some functions over here. That was happening to me because I've, I've always been known as smart, you know, like, uh, I mean, ever since I was a kid, quick and smart, that's generally the uh, reputation that uh, you know, that go goes around with me. And I'm just wondering, because I, I have a suspicion that a lot of the damage happened early, you know, it was, uh, you know, football certainly, I think, probably did it, because uh, I love tackling. I really love tackling. I love <laughs> not, I love, I, it's kind of funny. Uh, do you know the politician Kucinich? I do. Uh, Dennis Kucinich, you know, he's a Democrat. He ran for president, but he, uh, I knocked him out in a game. I actually knocked him out in a game um, when he was in high school. And um, and I have to tell you, I really just love that activity, but I, I probably uh, diminished some of my future prospects by doing that. You bet. And But when your frontal lobes are low, so probably they were low before the football hits, is people become excitement seeking, even conflict seeking as a way to turn their brains back on. So if you become the missile, if you will, in football, that's giving you adrenaline. It's giving you your own internal juice. Um, unfortunately, you're hurting other people at the process where what the Adderall does is it just but balances. He was a Democrat. He was a Democrat, uh, Daniel. He was a Democrat, you know, <laughs> <laughs> not to, uh, I religiously about, you know, not stay to away from disorient that. Your, <laughs> not to disorient your client base. But, um, uh, so, uh, is everybody unique in this? I mean, uh, you know, there's my case and thing, uh, uh, you, because you've got vast, you got the greatest amount of mapping of anybody in the world about actually what happens in the head. And, you know, yeah, yeah, I think you're the one who said the statement that the psychiatrists and other people who are, you know, helping people with their brains are the only medical doctors who never examine the organ. I, that's a very famous line of yours. Yeah, craziness. But, um, uh, I, I get a sense that you have like perfect pitch now uh, about uh, brain scans, you know, and you can look at a brain scan and you can see 25 different things, which 20 years ago, you might see 10 or 15 things. So what are you seeing now? Because you're, 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 you're the champ in this particular area of science and it really is science because it's measurable and it's predictable. Well, let's, um... Let's talk about that when we come back, because uh, the podcasts tend to be about 12 or 15 minutes, and that's very important. But what I also want to talk to you about is the people around you, 
and what have they seen both personally and in your business? Stay with us. Welcome back. We're here with my friend, uh, business coach, strategic coach, Dan Sullivan, who is the coach to people like Joe Polish and Peter Diamantes and so many great entrepreneurs. Uh, and Dan and I met after he came to the Amen Clinics. Uh, we scanned his brain. I told him he had a shitty brain. I actually don't remember that phrase, but Dan remembers that phrase. And so with a bad brain, you can do amazing things, but it's so much easier if you get it right, if you work on optimizing your brain. So in the last podcast, you asked me some of the things we've learned. And yes, you know, after almost 140,000 scans, I look at them and I immediately see what works too hard, what's not working hard enough. Um, yesterday, uh, I got to see uh, a very famous person on TV and he gave me permission uh, to use his name, but I won't right now, I will. And his brain was so bad when I first saw it, but just doing what we asked him to do, three months later, it's so much better. And that's the hope. You're not stuck with the brain you have. You can make it better. And my goal is to get people to love and care for their brains. Um, but I wanna know what's different? What do other people notice about working with you, both in your personal relationships and at Strategic Coach? Yeah, I would say um, to sum it up, the uh, the extent and quality of my teamwork with other people has easily gone 10 times. And that would be uh, team members who are, we call all of our uh, staff at Strategic Coach, they're members of teams. And uh, the whole, uh, you know, the whole central aspect is for people, we have a central concept, which is called unique ability, that you're doing these, this amount of activity, but you're actually only great in a much smaller circle. So your growth in coach is to focus more and more time where you're great, and then uh, we'll find other people to do the things that you're not so great at. You know, so it fits in. I mean, the, philosophically, we're very much in alignment. Before I met you, we, you know, the um, alignment of coach the te uh, technology is, uh, you know, I mean, the teamwork is really big. The other thing is that uh, I'm thinking longer. Um, you know, in other words, now I'm. I just turned 74 last week, and um, you know my my framework ahead is um, 
well, I have a project where I write a new book every quarter, and I'm going to do it for a hundred quarters. Okay, and uh, they're small books. They're not, you know, I mean, they're they're books you can read in an hour, and they're single topic books. But I feel very comfortable in making that commitment, which I've made very publicly for the next quarter. When you come in to your workshop, there will be a brand new book. I'll have a brand new book for you. And so I'm thinking much longer. But the other thing is that um, um, I'm just conscious that I'm really, really good at certain things. And the things that I'm not really good at, I, I really shouldn't be um, bothering other people. And I have this enormous uh, sense of not wasting other people's time with not valuable activities for, for them that isn't going to move forward. And then on the client side, uh, I think the other thing, my ability just to sit and listen to people and um, then ask them great questions about how they're thinking about something. And uh, they'll ask me a question and I'll, I'll say, well, I'd like to ask you something about your question. And then I'll I'll ask a question which has a bigger scope to it, and um, they actually discover their own answer that they question me simply by my, um, you know, asking the question. I remember at the uh, Genius Network, you explained what was going on, you know, uh, with your regard to your own future, and I said, and I drew you a diagram, and I said, well, this is where you are right now, but you might be here later later on. And so I'm very graphically, uh, graphically, uh, so I see thoughts in terms of graphics and I always have. I see diagrams when people are talking to me, I see a diagram and I can actually uh, talk to them about the diagram. You know, I can draw the diagram out for them and I can talk. And that's gotten probably uh, supercharged since I, I went through the aiming clinic, my ability to do these diagrams and listen to people and actually feed back to them what I'm seeing and then I'm asking questions about the diagram that I'm drawing. For so them. there's so much in here. So your productivity is better. Your insight into yourself is better. Your ability to say no so that you focus on what you're really good at is better. I love that. And what, what I'd really love for you to take a few minutes and teach people more about your concept of are you doing the right things and are you getting other people to do the things that you're not good at? Could you talk about that for a second? Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's, uh, yeah, I have to tell you, I, um, I had an experience once where I was a consultant on a project, and it was to uh, to actually talk about all the different ways that society could be improved to help people who are disabled and handicapped. And um, you know, I'm American, but I uh, I split. I have um you know I have two passports. So this was in Canada, and I went went across Canada for about three months, and I was interviewing uh, disabled people, and um, with the exception of autistics, you could actually, you know, there were extreme autistics and you really couldn't interview them. And, uh, you know, so you would have to interview their parents, but uh, let's say there were 40 and I did 39. When you read the transcripts of the uh, interviews, you couldn't tell that there was anything wrong with it. You know, they, and I had one a woman who said, she says, you know, I'm very, very slow. She said, I want to tell you, Mr. Sullivan, I'm very, very slow. So you're going to ask me a question, and it may take me five to ten times longer to answer the question, but I'll give you a good answer. And so it was, you know, the interview, I had to change tapes, and because in those days there were tapes and everything I had. A, and um, when we got the transcript back, she was completely lucid, and she says, my biggest problem is the, the, the world won't wait for me. Wow. And so I was thinking about this and I said, you know, these are visibly disabled people. These are visibly handicapped people, you know, and you can tell when you interact with them, they're missing a limb or they, they've got, you know, some sort of paralysis. So I was coming back on the plane and I said, but I'm disabled in a lot of areas. I said, you know, I'm good in certain areas, but anytime I, 
go outside my circle, uh, it's frustrating. I have conflict. Um, you know, I, um, you know, I, I, I don't interact with people. I have personality problems, but once I, and when I'm in my circle and I've got three things that I do, I'm a good coach and I can create brand new concepts almost at will. You know, I can listen to a conversation, create a concept, concept out of it that other people find meaningful. And the other thing is I'm, I'm, I'm good front stage. You know, I, uh, I have the eight podcast series. I do videos and, um, you know, um, you know, I, I really like the front stage and, um, uh, and that, that's my value in the company, but outside of that, that's 95% of my time in the year, you know, the other 5% are just, um, you know, it's just unscheduled time, but the scheduled time, I just do that. So, but I, um, I, we do this for all of our teams. So everybody, and we use Kathy Colby, you probably know Kathy Colby. Uh, with her Colby profile, which um, profile is how you take action to get results. So the way I take action to get results is I take action and then I do the research in motion. Some people, <laughs> some people have to do a lot of research before they'll go into action, but doing research before a, a decision or a research before an action is wasted time for me. You, you take action and you, and then you figure out real quick whether you've done the right thing or not. So that's the research. So what we show the entrepreneurs, and this is prior to them actually coming to grips with ADD or thing, we simply say, you're, you're, you're continually putting yourself in zones where you're, um, you're sabotaging yourself. And what we want you to do is just identify, and we have a whole process that we take people through to identify um, where they always feel confident where they always produce good results. And we say quarter by quarter, um, you're, you're, the amount of time you're spending in the bad zone is gonna be reduced. The amount of power that you're exerting just the, to the unique ability mm -hmm. zone is, uh, is going to increase. But then you're going to see, as you understand your own unique ability, you're gonna start seeing other people's unique abilities and you can do teamwork with them. And so you're only going to ask them to do what they're great at, and you're only going to do great, and then you're going to do teamwork. And I said, um, you know, as far as I can see, this is how the world works. It's unique ability teaming up with unique ability. Do you, you have can, a story you know, about how you help someone do that and it transformed their life? Well, uh, Joe, um, I mean, I've been working with Joe for 20 years. And I, say, I said to Joe, anytime you're not front stage, uh, you're doing harm to the world. <laughs> so you're talking about our friend Joe Polish, who is Joe Polish, the founder yeah, Joe, Joe, of Joe Genius is, Network. How am I going to do? You know, he'd be backstage, and how are we going to do this, and how are we going to do this? And I said, uh, um, I said, Joe, you, you being a backstage expert is like a rice farmer in Nepal telling a Sherpa how to get to the top of Mount Everest. I said, uh, <laughs> Uh, and I said, uh, you have no comprehension uh, how organizations work. You have no comprehension how you can make things recur, set up systems. I said, it's not your thing, but your ability just to create front stage realities and create things. I said, it's unsurpassed. Your ability to connect with strangers. And, and I said, I, I've not seen its equal in my entire life with 18,000 entrepreneurs. I've not seen the equal of you as a connector. And he's just unfailingly gracious. He's generous, you know, I mean, I, and everything else. But I said, um, you can't organize your life where you keep putting yourself in a minefield. You know, you've got to get into this. So when I came across your, your videos and I came across your books, I said, well, this is the scientific side of what I've kind of developed as a craft. And that's why it was so valuable to me is that you have the scientific measurements which verify why people get into trouble when they're not in their unique abilities. So that wow. you've been extraordinarily valuable to us. Thank you. When we come back, I would love, Dan, for you to talk to us about 
what are the big four or five lessons you've learned from coaching all these people for a long time that our listeners can put in their lives starting right away? You can learn more about Dan's work at strategiccoach.com. Um, and Dan has a podcast and lots of videos. He's just an amazing mentor. Stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, we're here with uh, strategic coach Dan Sullivan, uh, co-founder and creator of the Strategic Coach Program. Uh, he's had over 18,000 entrepreneurs uh, go through his program. He's a visionary, an innovator, uh, a mentor for uh, Tan and I, and we're just so grateful for um, him allowing us to help make his brain better and uh, him sharing uh, our work with so many. What, Dan, I want to do in, in this last podcast is, is really have you speak to our audience on the big things you have learned uh, mm -hmm. that have been the most helpful both to yourself and to the people you serve. So when I ask you that, what, what comes into your mind? Yeah, well, I think the, uh, you know, um, and uh, it was interesting because yesterday we had a number one workshop. So we have three levels of the program. Uh, the first is called the signature level, and this is really basic, and it's usually two hundred to five hundred thousand dollar income income groups. And then we have another group, uh, which is the um, uh, is the ten times. So the number one thing, and you'll appreciate this, uh, um, when um, I give talks, I just go to a whiteboard and I'll write three, you know, I'll write three or four words and I put a circle around it. And what I write down is self-managing company. And I said, now, you don't know what I'm going to say about this, but how many of you would like to have one of these? And every every hand in the room goes up. And Absolutely. I said, well, this is the key because you have certain unique abilities that gave you the courage to go out and be an entrepreneur in the marketplace. Um, but then life got really complicated. I said, life was never so good as the day before you actually had your first customer. You just had complete freedom of time. If you wanted to go to a movie that day, there was no problem. You know, you could play golf, but I said uh, the complexity of your life is you acquired customers and there's details and and but you're for the most part. And I would say this and I would I would certainly say it for you. Um, the success of the Amen Clinics uh, is obviously the scientific uh, part that you put together, but it's actually because. Uh, you're the message and you're also the messenger. And I remind entrepreneurs about this, that, that you cannot delegate the message of what you're creating in the marketplace and you you're the number one messenger uh, for this. That's certainly true in Strategic Coach for me. So I said, your impact is on the world and the, and, or, your impact is the message and the messenger to your team, because not everybody's a front stage performer, but in terms of who they are in the company, they're, and the biggest difference I make is that you should be in charge, but you shouldn't be in control. You should be in charge. You should be electrifying things. You should be giving vision. You should be providing motivation, but you shouldn't be controlling the details because your job is to always be creating the future company, not the present company. The present company is already created, and what you need is really good managers who are excellent at uh, maximizing the present company, but your job is to be taking all the experience of your success. So the first distinction I would be make is be in charge, don't be in control. And entrepreneurs, um, that's tough. You know, it's very, very tough. A lot of them are rugged individualists and and I said, the biggest shift that you have to make 
is that there's other people in the world who in what they do are just as smart as you are. And uh, you have to just find out where you're smart and not go to the areas where you're not smart. And the whole future of your growth as an entrepreneur is teamwork. So that's the second thing, teamwork empowered by technology. I said the whole future of the world is teamwork empowered by technology. And um, so that's the second one. And the other thing is you can't operate by a bureaucratic time system if you're an entrepreneur. So um, what I mean by that is entrepreneurs are bureaucrats have weekdays, they have weekends, they have holidays and they get a certain amount of vacation. And so what I say is um, that doesn't work for you. I mean, that's not how you operate. And I said, so I'm going to tell you how you operate. You operate on an entertainment model. Okay. And if you think about entertainers, which also includes athletes because they're part of the entertainment world, they have performance days and what, when, and it could be two or three hours, but um, it's crucial that during those two or three hours, they're just performing, whether it's a, you know, a stage performance or whether it's an athletic contest, they have, uh, and they also have practice days where they're getting ready to perform. And then they have lots of free time. They have lots of free time. And I said, so you're a performer, you're not a corporate executive. Uh, if you were a corporate executive, you'd be a corporate executive. You've chosen not to go in that route. You're a performer and you've got ideas for creating new kinds of value in the marketplace. And um, I said, so what we're going to do is we're going to take 365 days in the year and we call one of these days free days. And this is what we're going to look at first. How many free days are you actually taking? And a free day for us is no activity related to work whatsoever. You can't read business book, you, you can't have. So we recommend they get two phones. They have a business phone and they have a personal phone. And on free days, you can only use the personal phone. It's for personal relationships. There can be, can't check your computer. Um, you, you can't do a deal on a free day. So I, I just had a wonderful, wonderful conversation with Peter Diamandis yesterday because Peter, is a tightly scheduled entrepreneur. And he told me yesterday, and this is seven years that uh, Peter's been in coach. And he said, um, Dan, he said, I'm going to tell you something. He says, I canceled two huge speeches in July so that my family and I could go to Iceland for two weeks free. And I said, uh, you're approaching strategic coach manhood, Peter. <laughs> I love that. Never in a million years, seven years ago, would Peter have done that. But what he's noticing is that the more free time he has, the more slack time, the more he just does important deals. He only does really important things. And what you're trading is quantity of time for quality of impact, uh, quality of impact. And, uh, you know, and... Um, you know, and you see it in sports, you see it in entertainment. The corporate world doesn't really work that way, except the really great ones who are deal makers. You know, they, they make certain crucial decisions. And, um, you know, um, whatever the people think about is politics, I, uh, Trump is just knows when the crucial three minutes is, when the crucial 10 minutes, not about what's going on backstage, it's just what's going on front stage. You know, and um, Hillary was just the opposite. She thinks, um, you know, studying long and hard um, did it. And that's not the way the United States is an ADD country. So ADD. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's, a, it's a total ADD country because well, the ADD people were the people who risked their lives to come from Europe or Japan or China to come here. You know, you have to be ADD to leave behind everything you did because you're so thing. So I said, you have to have a leader who's in sync with the people. So we got an ADD president who's, you know, in charge of an ADD company, but you're seeing this more and more <laughs> because, because the world is becoming uh, more unpredictable about the changes because of technology. And so you have to reinvent yourself a lot on, on a quick basis. And the entrepreneur is the person who has an unusual ability to reinvent themselves in response to changing conditions. 
And um, so that's the big thing. And the other thing is think in terms of 25 years. So our time frame for thinking in the future is 25 years. And that gives you 100 quarters and you don't have to live the 25 years. You just have to live the 90, next 90 days, do five important things in the next 90 days and come back to us, go through your thinking, what did you achieve, what, uh, you know, and, and redirect yourself and go out. So you can see how for the ADD person, and I have to tell you, the program has been formed in response of what will keep an ADD person in my program for 20 years. That's amazing. And I heard one statistic, although I'd love your thought on this, that about 50% of CEOs of entrepreneurial companies have ADD. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's, not, it's not a liability if they just uh, go after the, uh, you know, the sweet zone, the unique ability, and then everything else just gets delegated out to other people who have unique abilities in those areas. And, uh, you know, I mean, this is why we love sports, because the really great sports teams, this, coaches don't ask athletes to do things that they're no, not good at. You know, they... Uh, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they, they will surround somebody with a lot of compensating capabilities where the people are really, really great at it, you know. And, uh, you know, I mean, where you are, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of psychologists and psychiatrists, uh, you know, who are dealing with the issue of ADD. They've got a practice and they've got clients. You're unique. I mean, when I look at you, because... You said, well, first of all, it's not my opinion that we're going to go on. It's not my unique, you know, my unique artistic ability to figure out whether you're unique or not. Um, we're going to actually do tests and I can show you the tests. And so you, you immediately developed a multiplier and then you surrounded yourself by people, uh, you know, everybody who's needed for one clinic. And then how many do you have now? Uh, eight. We just opened yeah. our eighth clinic. And um, yeah. Yeah, and you did that because there are certain things that you're really great at, and uh, you, you not only are you great at, but you'll be greater at them in the future. And uh, as long as you can stay in that sweet, and the you know the support systems around you, plus the you know you have other things like growing reputation. You have uh, you know you you just have uh, raving fans. Uh, and you can build build on that, but you can multiply yourself almost indefinitely. You look like you're in great shape, and uh, there'd be no reason why you wouldn't be better at your game 25 years from now than you are from today. I mean, I'm 74, and I'm looking at 99. You know, because the help is out there. Peter and I just had two podcasts last night, and he said, you know, um, you know, the help in terms of technology and science is out there, but uh, People who don't have any reason to use them aren't even going to notice them, you know. And well, and being passionate, being purposeful, actually, people live longer. They have less dementia um, if they have a reason to, to give up. And a yep. lot of entrepreneurs, money's not the thing. Um, although I always say if there's no margin, there's no mission, right? So you have to be a good business person, but that's not the reason why we do it. We do it because we're passionate about our businesses. I mean, forever I've been passionate about what we do at Amen Clinics. Um, yeah, and I notice, I notice my sense of humor is proportional to cash flow. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I understand. And I, and I don't say that lightly. To actually have a sense of humor about yourself means that you're uh, significantly freed up in your freed up in your brain. You know that uh, you're you can see yourself from different directions, and you can make yourself the object of your own humor. That's actually a phenomenal psychological capability. And um, thing. And I would say that the other thing that we do uh, right off the bat. Um, when they come in, uh, people come into the program, I say, first thing I want you to do is write down a number. And the number is when you, uh, the, um, how old you're gonna be when you die. I just want you to write down. Everybody does, I've, never, I've done it with 18, our company's done it with 18,000 people. And I said, now I want you not to talk about that number and let's say it's 85. I said, let's talk about 84, the year before. 
and I want you to tell me how you are physically um, when you're 84. And they, oh, great, great shape, and, you know, healthy. And I say, mentally, how are you? Sharp, you know, sharp, got all the faculties. And I said, uh, financially, independent, uh, no worries. Um, relationship, oh, just deep relationships, many uh, stimulating relationships. And I say, and what is your assessment of your life that you've lived over the first 84 years? What would you say about it? So, you know, contributed immensely, uh, maximized my opportunities. And I said, so uh, um, everybody says the same thing. All 18,000 have said the same thing. So I repeat it back to them, you know, you know, um, you know, the uh, physically, mentally, financially relationship. And I said, so if you were that way at 84, what do you think the chances are you would die at 85? <laughs> and they say, well, I wouldn't. I said, you wouldn't. So how much longer than 85 would you live? And they said, 10, 15 years. And I said, well, which is it, 10 or 15? And they said, well, 15. I said, okay, we're at 100. You've been here an hour and a half, and I just bought you 15 years. That's hysterical. But here's the thing I did because everybody's got a number, but very few people know they have a number. They pick it up from family history, you know, actuarial tables, uh, statistics. But you are actually planning your life and you're uh, investing or not investing. You're, you're, you're slowing down in relationship to a number. So mine's 156. I, I, um, 31 years ago, I established that I was going to live to 156. And the reason is I wanted to live a complete century and I was born in 1944, so I missed the 20th. And um, so I said, well, we'll add 56 and then we'll start fresh uh, in 2000, so I'll, 21st century. So I didn't tell anybody about this. I just did it one afternoon and I said, I wonder if I think about this for five years, it will actually shift my expectations of how long I'm going to live. And at the five year mark, whenever I think of my lifetime, my brain immediately switched to 156. And I'll tell you, you know, Dan, when I really, really noticed it uh, was when I started getting to be about 65 and 70, uh, 10 years ago. Um, and it had to do with the attitudes of people who are my age about how long, you know, what they were doing with their life. And, you know, I was thinking that, you know, the next 30 years is going to be the huge growth period. You know, I mean, we're, I mean, we're I, it was kind of like the diagram that, uh, you know, I shared with you when you, you know, when you were in Scottsdale. And that is, I said, supposing you're just breaking water now, you're in a Hawaiian island, you know, the tallest mountain in the world is actually Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa is a mile higher than Everest, but you don't see uh, the base and up to, you know, it's about eight or 9,000 feet. And my feeling is, you know, from an outside standpoint right now, you're just breaking water. People are just becoming really aware of you because people are just really becoming aware of the problem and uh, the whole issue of brain and how much brain determines everything else, the health of your brain, the, you know, the, uh, how much of the abilities of the brain you still have. I, I think you're just, you know, you're just breaking water right now. This is, uh, and all the growth is gonna be over the next 20 or 30 years. So how you're looking at that and what you're gonna focus, how you're going to divide your time up and just what you're gonna look at for the next, see, I think you've got the message and the, you're the messenger for a whole world now that's just coming to grips with a fundamental issue um, that changes everything. I mean, this literally changes everything. So when we were growing up, space was the new frontier. Remember that, that go where no man has ever gone before. And now I firmly believe the next 30 years it's the space between your ears is yep. the new frontier. And given our database of 140,000 scans, we know things that no one else knows. Yeah. Um, you know, that things like Lyme disease are a major cause of psychiatric illness, that playing football, whether it's high school or college or in the NFL, it's a damaging sport and it can negatively impact 
your life, well, even though soccer is if you're doing headshots, you know, if you're doing headshots. It's, right. Uh, and if you love yeah. it, as you did, yeah, it even yeah. it puts you at higher risk. And so the goal is teaching people to love their brains from the beginning. And if even if they've been bad to their brain, well, what is it I can do to repair it? So from from a, a business standpoint or a, a, a mission standpoint, it's huge. But it's so exciting, so much fun. Yeah. So so yeah. exciting. No, I'm convinced. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I get updated with your, um, you know, your analysis every, you know, um, every year, couple of years uh, when I see you, and I said, you know, almost everything you want to know about education can build on the plat platform of how you're taking care of your brain, you know, your total learning ability. I have to tell you, and uh, I don't want to run you too long here, but one of my uh, great um, the sort of hobbies is I go to London a lot because the, we have the company in London and they have one of the most phenomenal institutions in the world and it's the black cab drivers in London. And um, it's very, very interesting because I, anytime I get into a black cab and I don't take Uber, uh, because the black cab drivers to get their medallion have to be aware of roughly about 3000 streets. They have to kind of, if you say it, they have to be kind of within a matter of seconds, they have to kind of know where it is and they don't have, they don't have the phones, you know, they don't have the GSP and um, they know about a thousand landmarks. So I asked them, I said, well, how many started in your class? Uh, you know, the, uh, class that you started because they have classes, continual classes, and they start about 25. And I said, how, how long does it take to get through before you get your medallion? And they said, it's about three years full-time study. It's like a master's degree. I mean, it's like a PhD. Uh, and it's streetology, you know, they're, 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 they're doctors of streetology. But London, it was designed by cows 2,000 years ago. You know, there's not a straight <laughs> There's not a straight street and, you know, and that the street in three miles will change names six times and will change directions four times. And they have to be able to answer the question. This is the fastest, easiest route to get there. And so um, I said to them, um, um, when I give you an address, what are, what's happening in your brain? And they say, well, I'm seeing the complete math. And, in my brain, and I said, if you don't have you don't have that visual ability, can you be a black cab driver? And he says, no, because you you wouldn't. Uh, it would be too frustrating. That's uh, hysterical. You wouldn't, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't get better. You wouldn't get Do better. You know, there's actually an MRI study on London cab drivers, and it showed a part of their brain called the hippocampus, which is Greek for seahorse. They're about the size of your thumbs was significantly larger in London cab drivers. And the more you work it, the bigger it gets. So the more you use it, the more you can use it. And so even though you are 74, because you have the expectation you're gonna to live to 156 and you stay completely immersed in what you're passionate about, your mu and you got rid of the sugar. Let's not get rid of that. That's important. You got rid of the sugar and you're balancing your brain with the medicine. You are likely to be more purposeful, sharper for a longer period of time than anyone else your age. So we have to stop. But what a joy yeah. to spend time yeah, with you. Yeah. It was a real pleasure. But I just wanted to get across here how much in alignment, you know, uh, 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 you know, what I discovered when I came to the clinic, how much in alignment the work that I've been doing since 1974 is, but two completely different worlds. I mean, you came at it from a completely different direction, but that's how entrepreneurism and what the next level of entrepreneurism is where you are so good in your company that you've gone 10 times. Now you can collaborate. So we, we say, what would it take to go a hundred times now? I mean, you've already gone, how many times have you gone? 10 times, three or four times. But now let's go a hundred times and you'd say, well, I probably couldn't do that inside my company. So I said, so what's the capability out in the marketplace? 
doesn't have anything to do with you that you need to go a hundred times. And we just started this program about a month ago. And what, what do we have now about 40 total? 40 and um, everybody who's everybody that you would know is in this program. Dean Graziosi starting uh, in two weeks. Joe's there, uh, you know, Joe, Joe Polish, of course. But a lot of people who know you are in that program and they, they are visibly younger. They are visibly younger because I've just given them another 25 or 30 years of fascination and motivation uh, as, as they go forward. And this, you know, this is why I'm on the planet uh, is just to help this one kind of person, this entrepreneur, this person who creates uh, new value in the marketplace, creates new solutions in the marketplace. And this is all I really want to do is just help people who have something massive to give to the world to do it in a way that's enjoyable for them. I mean, there's lots of people who are doing great things for the world, but they're not getting any psychic benefit for it, from it. You know. Well, but, send me information on it. I would love to know more. For people who want to know more about Dan Sullivan, he has books. Uh, I think going to strategiccoach.com would be a, a great thing to it's do. It's actually the best. Yeah. Great. Right. Yeah. It's All really right, my easy. friend. Thank you so much. Use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or on our supplements at brainmdhealth.com. Thank you for listening to the Brain Warriors Way podcast. Go to iTunes and leave a review and you'll automatically be entered into a drawing to get a free signed copy of the Brain Warriors Way and the Brain Warriors Way cookbook we give away every month.